I wanted to speak to you about what happens when the Divine Feminine surrenders on this journey. Truly, truly surrenders and what that actually means and how to surrender and let go. Which is ultimately what will truly shift the energy and bring you into a sense of peace on this journey instead of constantly being in a state of fear or anxiety or loss. So I just wanted to share a quick story about a time where I completely surrendered. And this was long before I was on this journey consciously. This happened when I was 16 And I was coming home from a tennis match. I was driving home. And um, I was messing with the radio. So my right side of my tires, the right tires, started to get sucked into the, the, the ditch on the side of the road. And it started to pull me into the ditch. And I began to panic, and instead of stepping on the brake, I actually accelerated, and I was probably already going like 40 or 50, probably at least 50. And then a driveway was coming up, which crossed the ditch, and I hit it head on, going however fast I was going. At that point, I don't know. And my car started to flip, and it flipped like five or six times before it finally stopped and landed upside right. And my entire car was crushed, except for where I was sitting. And the interesting thing is, is when I realized what was happening and that there was no way out, there's a couple of things that happened. I said a prayer, and then I completely let go and surrender. When I thought I was facing what looked like certain death. Like I thought I was like, okay, this is it. So I said a prayer and then I surrendered. I let go. I let go of everything. There was a sense of peace that just, that just permeated There was zero fear. There was only peace. And time seemed like it stopped, like there was no time. I was present in the moment and there was nothing else. There was nothing else except for what was happening. And I was in complete acceptance of it but it seemed like years and years that it took it was slow motion so as I was going through this experience in slow motion where time seemed to not exist I was just completely present in the present moment of right then what was happening so I was in the In the now, as they say, in that eternal moment of now, there was no escape. There was no projections into the future. There was no looking back. There was no anything. There was just presence. And so in that moment, I completely disidentified with my mind as who I was. But I was very present. It wasn't like I was unconscious or anything like that. I was present, awake, and aware, fully surrendered and in acceptance with a sense of the most comforting sense of peace where there was zero fear and I was unafraid even though I could feel my body bouncing around in the car, so my body was doing whatever it was doing, 
you know, my head was hitting the windshield, metal, things like that. Like my body had things happening. And I could hear, I could hear the the sound of the crushing metal. I could hear, you know, the loudness of it all. It was like extremely loud. I could smell the gasoline. I could smell the dirt and the smoke. So my senses were alive. I was completely present and aware. I could see, see, but I had my eyes closed for the most of it. But my senses were on point. But I wasn't identified with my mind. And it left me in a pure state of like peace and ease and surrender and faith. And the reason I share this with you is because you don't have to have what you think is a brush with death or a near-death experience in order to realize that you are not your mind and that you are really the pure presence that exists only in the now, the conscious awareness that is love and peace, and unity, and fully surrendered. This essence is your true beingness. This is your true beingness that does not need anything outside of itself. It's not trying to get anything. It's not trying to avoid anything. It doesn't need anything added to it, and there's nothing that can be taken away from it. There's just the essence of that which is you, always there, always present, in this eternal moment of now, completely at peace and in a state of surrender. That doesn't mean that you go through life checked out and numbed out. The mind would like to go there right now and have some kind of negative connotation about this because that's what the mind does. The mind, as it's listening to this message, is probably perking up and saying, yeah, but I'm here to experience X, Y, and Z. Like, I don't want to just be surrendered and okay with everything. Like, I want to experience this and this and this and and all these kind of things. Okay. So recognize that that's what the mind does. The mind is always chasing something. The mind is always on the chase for the next thing that it can acquire or add to itself, add to your experience in order to make you feel happier, more more abundant or successful or wealthier or or affluent or popular or liked and it wants to do everything that it can to avoid you know rejection and heartache and betrayal and all of the things that all the pain and all the suffering the mind the egoic mind wants to continue to do that forever and ever and ever as long as possible if you let it and what that does is It sucks you out of that present moment, the the presence, the divine presence that you are, the awareness that you are, the love that you are, the peace that you are, because you're constantly on the chase. You're constantly seeking something else outside of yourself in order to make your experience better or feel more fulfilled in some way. And it's not as if your awareness or your divine presence goes anywhere. It's always there. It's the unchanging, eternal, timeless aspect of your being. It's always there. But the scenes of your life keep changing externally. The scenes of your story, the scenes of your narrative. In order to find what you already have within you. The paradox is, 
is that as you naturally come into embodying your divine presence and the essence within you that is love and peace, you begin to attract in what it is you actually desire naturally and effortlessly because you have now merged with your inner being, the, the, the essence of you that is already one with everything that you're seeking. This is why you hear you already are that which you seek. Because you are one with everything that you're seeking, but not at the level of the mind. Only at the level of your pure essence, your divine nature. But as a human, we have this extra layer called self-consciousness where now we have this separate sense of self that operates as this small me, this separate sense of me. And this separate sense of me is completely supported by your mind. Your mind is what creates the separate sense of me. And when you're living from the separate sense of me, you're always in a state of chasing and seeking and suffering where you're trapped in this timeline that always has something better for you in the future and always has something for you in the past to worry about that you don't want to recreate or whatever. And your mind just goes back and forth like a pendulum swinging back and forth between past and future, past and future, past and future, past and future, anything but now. So this is basically a rejection of the now. That's basically saying that what's happening now isn't good enough. There has to be something else in order for me to be happy or fulfilled. So what's happening now isn't good enough. But even when you're facing what seems to be certain death in the scenario that I shared, which is hardly the ideal circumstance as far as the mind is concerned, right? Even in that, in that situation, when not identified with time anymore and the story or the narrative of me, the storyline of me, being in complete acceptance of what was, complete acceptance of what's happening, I was able to find peace, complete peace and a total absence of fear. So even in the most extreme circumstance, this transcendence of the mind, the one the part of you that's always worrying, or the part of you that's always anxious, the part of you that's always fear-based in lack or scarcity or not good enough or unworthiness, the part of you that's always chasing something in the future in order to fill that void, that part was not there. That part was transcended in that experience that I shared with you. That surrender and acceptance of what is allowed me to move into pure presence. A complete letting go allowed me to move into pure, pure presence, my divine presence. The true you, the essence of your being, does not need anything. is always there, is always present with you, has never left you. It is your true you. It is the you that, the you that you think you are right now 
the the person that you think you are listening to this is not the true you. The true you is the essence of your being. It's your pure awareness. It's your divine presence that happens to be playing this experience right now as what you would refer to as you. And the thing that keeps this separate sense of self intact is an attachment to a story or narrative. The story and narratives will keep you trapped and keep you chasing and keep you in the future and in the past and anywhere but present. In order to find peace on this journey, it's going to require a full surrender and a letting go. A letting go of the story, a letting go of the narrative, a letting go of expectations, a letting go of past dramas and storylines and narratives, a letting go of who's right and who's wrong, that's duality, a letting go of timelines and fully coming into acceptance of what is right now in this present moment and staying present with what is and that means staying present with whatever comes up because what comes up is usually bypassed, suppressed, rejected or run away from and this is key to remember because that's what the old that those are the old patterns that are being broken when when what comes up you're still present with what comes up but now you're and that means you're no longer rejecting running suppressing or avoiding anything that comes up and so that means you're present with your pain that means you're present with your suffering that means you're present with your loss that means you're present with your feelings of being betrayed or abandoned that means you're present and you're conscious with your shadow and with the suffering. Not to dwell on it, not to swim in it, not to take on that identity, not to become the victim. But to be present with life itself exactly how it is without the need to get it to conform and bend to your will through some form of manipulation or seeking outside of yourself. Meaning you're no longer rejecting the present moment. Because if you're constantly rejecting the present moment by seeking, 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 pushing away, pushing away, pushing away, avoiding, 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 suppressing, 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 chasing, 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 and all the things, you will never come into this place of pure peace and presence within you. And what happens is when you fully come into the present moment and you just, you fully accept what is, which is really what surrendering is, you're letting go. And what are you letting go of? You're letting go of resistance. And when you're able to let go of resistance and be present and surrender to what is, what happens is the mind the identification with the mind and the and the power that the that this mental um construct had over you constantly pulling your awareness pulling your awareness in the future pulling your awareness into the past which doesn't actually really exist there is no future there is no past it's all just now the only place that future or past exist is in your mind so your mind is just creating this mirage your mind is just creating this mirage that keeps your awareness focused on that rather than what's actually happening in the present moment and so you're not actually even present for your life because 99 percent of the population out there is just living from this conceptual reality. They're living in the future. They're living in the past. They're projecting into the future. They're worried about the past. Or they have a narrative running in their mind all the time, 
even as they're just doing their day-to-day tasks, the mind is just creating dramas and having arguments and creating situations that don't even exist, like arguing with itself even. Like the mind is just active, 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 and pulling your awareness away from the present moment. So most people don't even experience their own life. They don't get to be present with their own life because they're only living from their conceptual reality, which is the past and the future that the mind keeps you trapped in, which actually doesn't exist. It's all just this conceptual reality. It's not even real. It's not even real. And you're here to transcend that. And part of that is recognizing your attachment to the story and to the narrative and to outcomes and to timelines and to all of the other things that the ego needs to happen on its behalf in order to feel okay, abundant, loved, supported, whole and complete. And lucky you... You are on the divine feminine journey and you have met your divine counterpart, which gives you a hell of a story and gives you a hell of a narrative and a lot of expectation and a lot of future promise and a lot of rejection and abandonment to try to avoid and a lot of all of it, both sides of the pendulum swinging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for you to either stay stuck on going in cycles over and over and over again, but not getting anywhere like a hamster in a wheel or like a a dog chasing its tail. Or at any point, you can hop off the hamster wheel through your conscious presence, through your divine presence, through your surrender to the now moment which is the only place your life exists. Everything else is a mirage. That part of you is already whole and already complete and doesn't need anything from anyone. And again, your mind may speak up right now and say like, but I have needs and I'm not going to deny my needs and I'm a woman or I'm a man and I have needs and I have desires to do this, 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 this and that and blah, blah, blah. And that's cool. Recognize that the mind is doing that. This isn't saying that you don't get to have a full life experience. In in fact, it's saying the exact opposite. Because when you're trapped in your mind, constantly running from fear, lack or scarcity or chasing illusions outside of yourself, chasing false sense of hope, chasing material success and all of these things that you think are going to solve your problems or another person or success that's just suffering when you come into pure presence and you become one with everything that you desire at your core you get to experience all of it in the most divinely beautiful unfolding ways so this isn't about not having a full life experience In fact, the opposite is true. Being trapped in your mind and the mental prison that keeps you trapped and looping in toxic cycles of suffering, that is not having a full life experience. When you come into presence and your divine essence and you allow yourself to abide in that and emanate that from your being, now you get to experience joy and love and peace and prosperity and abundance that gets to flow to you in all the beautiful ways that the divine has in store. Because you're no longer operating from fear. You're no longer operating from lack. You're no longer operating from scarcity. You're no longer operating from needing something in order to fulfill you or chasing something outside of you in order to fulfill you. You get to experience all of the beautiful things in life for the pure joy of experiencing them because it brings you joy or because it brings happiness or it brings abundance, but not because you quote-unquote need it. 
just because it's a beautiful thing to create. But you're not in a codependent state. You're not in this neediness state. You're not in this lack-filled state, right? And so paradoxically, when you let it go, that's when you actually get to receive it. But one of the quotes I really like that I'll share really quick is, your ships come in over don't care sea. And that doesn't mean that you don't have desires, and that doesn't mean that you don't, you know, have certain things you would like to see unfold in your life like that's perfectly fine but when your ships come in over a don't care sea it simply means that you're not in that mental state of caring or worrying about it anymore you're just allowing life to flow in the most beautiful harmonious way Which is exactly what happens when you're connected to your divine feminine essence within you. Your feminine essence is flow and ease and abundance. And that gets to flow to you in the most natural ways. You're not worried about it. You don't care and you don't not care. You're more in this neutral place. You're good either way. And when you're living from your divine essence and you're fully in a state of acceptance of what is, this doesn't mean that you're a doormat and that you don't have standards. This doesn't mean that you're just available for anything and everything and people can just walk all over you or treat you like shit or anything like that. When you're truly living from your presence and your divine essence, you know your worthiness. You know your divine worthiness and this energy is is very wise and very you know courageous from within this is not about being a pushover or a doormat or anything like that when you're in acceptance of what is you you have healthy boundaries when you're emanating from this very naturally and easily because you're not afraid to speak your truth you're not afraid to say no to something or no to someone you're not afraid to walk away if something isn't serving you you're not afraid of those things because you know you are good either way so this is what wanted to come through i hope this resonated If it did, I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you would like support on your journey and you're ready to fully claim your divine sovereignty as a divinely worthy woman, I invite you to check out Embody the Empress, which is my divine feminine monthly immersion. You can check out all the details in the caption below this video. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.